For me, since I started playing, uh, I guess after my JV season, I played towards the end of my, uh, the, the end of the season in varsity, uh, after that, I started getting comfortable. I started going to camps. I started being seen in, I guess, Florida, just to get my name kind of out there, going to the Nike camp, uh, just a couple of South Florida camps. I went to a couple of Miami camps, and that's what really got teams to really, or colleges to begin to really look at me. And I think, I think my first offer was North Carolina at the time. And then it was, ended up being Boston College, and then it was like Syracuse, Connecticut. They just started rolling in like the smaller colleges. And then all of a sudden, you know, after they saw me play my junior year, it ended up becoming the bigger colleges. You know, I ended up being like Louisville, Florida, Ole Miss, I got Colorado, Maryland, Michigan State. Shoot, I mean, I can like just rattle them all off for days. And I kind of had myself set on Florida because I somewhat wanted to be in the vicinity in the state because I really wanted to go to Miami, but I didn't get an offer. I wasn't even getting a sniff, really. And so I was getting ready to commit. And during this time, Ron Zook got fired. So I was trying to think, man, who's going to be the next coach kind of be in line? And I didn't know Urban Meyer was going to be who he was. And I, was. I didn't even give him the benefit of the doubt. So I ended up wanting to switch my attention to go to Ole Miss. I had a buddy that was already there. He wanted to uh, basically take me under his wing. And he said he's going to hook me up. He's going to let me know that you're good here. I'm going to be looking after you. So I felt comfortable that way. And I thought my parents would too, but they didn't even want me they didn't even want me in the state of Mississippi at all. They didn't feel safe. But Dave Cutcliffe, the uh, the head coach there at the time, he ended up getting fired. So now I'm thinking, damn, where am I going to go? Uh, I'm down to only a few options at this point as, as far as what I wanted to do is down to Louisville, Colorado, and Maryland. Those were my like set choices as, as far as my list of, of places I wanted to go to. and. I don't know, my mom just, she didn't feel comfortable with me going all the way out to Colorado because I had an uncle that played out there in the 80s. So I thought I would feel at least somewhat comfortable, but she didn't want me being so far away. And then after that, it became Louisville and it became Maryland. And Louisville kind of backed away because I had broke my leg my senior year. Oh, you know, again, this was like the second, no, it's the first time I broke my leg out of three times. And Louisville kind of backed away but Maryland was still pressed on. You know, Coach Friesian was very adamant about having me come there, not for playing, but more getting my education. He promised that to my mother, and that's what stood out the most about going to the University of Maryland. So I ended up taking a chance. I went there. Um, was I signed as a receiver, and you know I didn't know. I, I only knew just I was like one trick pony kind of reverses, screens, sh like deep shots. Like I was a, a vertical threat. I didn't really know offense. I didn't understand offense. So for me, it was hard to grasp the entire game, like how to play receiver and then, you know, position, the different positions of X, Y, and Z, the different motions, the zing motion, the yak motion, any type of motion that starts with whatever letter the position group is. You know, for me, that was hard to, to grasp. And I tried to get help with it, but at the speed everybody else was moving, I wasn't moving at the same pace. But my defensive coordinator, he always saw me, and he always saw that I was tough. He saw I was physical. I was one of the guys that was always willing to block and you know get my hands dirty. And you know he suggested like, why don't you come to the other side of the ball? And I was considered like a small receiver at the time, and I was I was six foot. I was almost I was like six foot and a half. I was like two thirteen. Like I was a a big dude. If you know if I went over and played corner. I started thinking about it some more. You know, maybe I could do it. You know, maybe I could be on that side of the ball because I really wanted to play. So I started slowly just watching the defense because I was on scout team. So I just watched those guys and I would see what they were calling, see what they were doing, how they were communicating just to get my, I guess, get myself prepared. So after I was a receiver for my red shirt freshman year. 
Well, my retro year, retro freshman year, and then it was my retro sophomore year where I, I basically made a decision to kind of switch over onto defense. And I went and talked to Coach Friesian, who was my head coach, and I asked him, could I go to the other side of the ball? I feel like my opportunity would be over there. I'm, how I'm built, what I can do, is more well suited on that side of the ball instead of being on offense. And, you know, he was pleading with me, you know, don't, don't do that, you don't need to do that. You, you have an opportunity on our side of the ball, on the offensive side. Uh, we want you to stay there, we want you to compete for a spot. But in my heart and my mind, I didn't want to anymore. I, I felt like I needed to go this route. And you know, I was getting opposition like crazy. You know, my, my recruiting coach said I shouldn't do it. My mom said I shouldn't do it. You know, everybody that you can think of said I shouldn't do it, but they never really knew my position. They didn't know how I was feeling. So Coach Frieden gave me a week. He said, if that's something you really want to do, when we start uh, spring ball, if I see you in one of those two rooms, I'll know your answer. So you don't have to give it to me right away. I'll let you think about it. You know, obviously the week went by and you know, he saw me in the DB room and you know, he got his answer. And I guess, I don't know, he probably didn't take it the right way. He didn't take it the way, I don't know, he thought I, I should have as, as far as the opportunity. But you know, I felt in my mind and my heart, that's what I wanted to do. And I knew it was gonna be a, a struggle. I knew it was gonna be something I had to definitely put in some work. You know, I remember coming in there into the room and they were showing a depth chart. And I think I was seventh on the depth chart as far as like corners out of everybody. So I had you know, a lot of work to do. And I, there were walk-ons that were ahead of me. And I'm a guy that's on scholarship, you know, so I, I knew how they felt coming in as far as those guys on the offense losing me. But I didn't let that affect me. I didn't let that deter me from what I wanted to do and what I wanted to accomplish. So I just worked my butt off from that spring ball until, shoot, from camp. I think it was maybe in the middle of the season where I actually got to start playing. But I put in so much work from going to seventh string to, you know, damn near almost starting now and have no idea what I'm really doing out there, still learning. I was able to, to continue to improve and get it and get more comfortable. And as uh, the games went on, as the off season went on, I was able to grasp it some more. I started feeling more comfortable, but in turn that, that helped me begin to motivate other guys around me because I knew what to expect from myself and what I had done to get to that point. And I wanted the same thing for all my teammates. I wanted the same thing for anybody that was associated with me or anybody that I had uh, crossed paths with. So I just, you know, I just stayed dedicated to just that. I was so disciplined with everything that I wanted to do my senior year or leading up to my senior year. And I made sure I put my all into it because there was a lot of stake. You know, I, I had a lot of high goals and aspirations. I wanted to win you know, our division because I knew that would help us get to the ACC championship. And if we could at least have a chance to do that, that'd be great. I also wanted to go out my senior year with a bang. You know, I wanted to have some type of something coming out as far as like, you know, the draft. I wanted people to at least know who I was at the end of the season, leave my mark in the ACC. So doing all that work, putting in all the extra time, making sure everything was good, I did that. And then the second game of the season, we were playing James Madison. I think it was, it was the fourth quarter. I think it was like, it might've been third and six. And there was a play for me where I had a green light to basically blitz or I could still stay in coverage. And I felt like I needed to blitz because it was third and, I believe it was like third and four, or maybe something short. And I knew we needed to get the ball back. And they were on their, they were probably on their 30 or something like that. So I knew if we could stop them, get a punt, our offense would at least get us down there and score, get a field goal. And I remember coming around blitzing. I try and get the running back or clip his, his leg. And as I'm rolling around on the ground, like I just hear, well, here I just feel like a just, it felt like a hammer just came and just hit me across my leg. And I knew it like instantly when it happened, the pain was so bad, I knew that something was wrong because I felt that same pain my senior year when I was in high school. And I didn't want to look at it at first, I just knew that I broke my leg. I just didn't want to see how bad it was. And when I actually looked down, I, I was just like, it can't be happening again. But 
the one thing I did do that I didn't do the first time when I broke it was kind of just like always think like, why me? Like, why is this happening to me? You know, I was a guy that had all these scholarships in high school, Mr. Whatever you want to call it, Mr. All World, Mr. All American, all this stuff. And then, you know, that happens. It's like your world just changes the next day. And I didn't really know how to adjust to that. But this second time coming around, some reason I was just more calm. I was more relaxed. I was more understanding because I knew that I had another road that I had to take. It was, it was an adjustment for me that had to happen overnight and mentally at least I knew physically it was going to take a little bit longer but mentally I had to tell myself that you know this is only a minor setback and this is something that you can overcome but you have to put that work in now mentally to know that this is going to be a long road and there's going to be days that it's frustrating and I had to really do all that when I was on the field and I had to keep a calm, straight face. I remember my parents, my mom, my dad, my brother, and my sister, as I'm getting ready to go in the ambulance. And I look at all them and I just let them know that I'm good, I'm cool. And I didn't want them to, to panic or see any fear. I wanted them to just see me calm on my face so they would be all right. Because they weren't gonna stay long, they were only gonna stay for the surgery and have to go back home. So, you know, going through that after the surgery, that was tough. The, the rehab process was even tougher for me because not only did I have to worry about rehabbing, I had to worry about am I going to be able to stay another year or do I go to the NFL and probably try my hand at that or shoot, worry about school and just worry about life because you, you never know. I had those three outlets that I had to think about while trying to just get myself back right. But I was able to just hone in to, to focus on one thing that I needed to do and I knew that if I just rehab myself the right way, the correct way, and I stay focused on that, everything else would kind of piece themselves together. I knew I was graduating that year. I knew that I still had people that are interested in me. They knew that it was just a break. It was a bone that was there. There was no ligaments. It was nothing like that. So all I had to do was just show them that I was healthy enough to play, and, and that was it. So I just made sure every single day I could do something to at least improve myself, improve the muscles around my knee, improve my calf muscles, improve my my quad, anything that I could do to, to get myself back right to at least jog, that's what I started doing. And I just made that just my main goal and focus, not to get a whole all the way 100% back, but to just get a little bit better every single day. And I think through that injury, it taught me a lot about being patient, a lot about laying every brick perfectly and always coming to work every day knowing that you have to relearn something. You always have to refocus. You always have to recommit because if you're not going to do that and you're just going to take every day for granted, you're not going to lay every brick perfectly. And since I had to do that from scratch and really on my own, because a lot of people didn't even think I was going to be able to come back from an injury like this or even go to the league or even the next level. And that was something that I had to deal with myself mentally. But the one person that, that really helped me with this and, and helped me make my decision was my strength and conditioning coach. And he was the one that was telling me the whole process. First of all, his name is Deej Galt. And he's the one that just was telling me everything behind the scenes as far as what scouts were saying, what they wanted to see with me, what they wanted to see about me, my health. They wanted to know if I'd be able to run. They knew I was going to the combine. They just wanted to make sure as, as far as the status report, how well I was gonna be when they saw me at the combine. And then everything else after that, from testing to running, all, you know, all the things that you can think about. So it started to become more clear as far as what I needed to do. Obviously, I made my decision based off of what he said, regardless of what all the other people were saying. But for him to come to me and let me know that he trusts me enough to make that decision to go ahead and take the next step gave me a lot more confidence because he told me that there's nothing more that you can do here at this school. You've done everything you possibly have have for the last five years just to come back just to relive it again it's really not worth it to you you need to go ahead you need to challenge yourself again because you challenge yourself to the brink you challenge yourself to the limit while you were at Maryland and you need to do that elsewhere and I know you can so once he said that I shoot I just went ahead and just did it man and and took a chance not knowing where I was going to go anywhere from three to seven you know and and really it was just faith in God. I just let it all be on him. And I just did what I could. And I was just to work hard to continue to get back right. 
not worried about what people were saying, not worried about the rankings, none of that stuff, because it didn't matter to me. You know, at the end of the day, I'm glad I didn't do those things. I'm glad I didn't get sidetracked on those things or get into that because it kept me focused on what I needed to do. And every single day I went out to do that. And I felt like through those eight years that I was able to play, I did that each and every day. And I'm glad that I stuck to that because there's no way I would have been able to play as long as I have been if I wasn't that focused and I wasn't that disciplined.